All right, so I haven't given this talk for two months, and there are some spelling inconsistencies in it. Didn't have time to change it. It's been a hectic week at work, um, or a hectic couple of months at work, let's be real. But uh, today I'm going to be talking about what is Git. So just to show hands and know what kind of level I'm dealing with, how many of you have heard of Git or have used Git? Okay. Or that was two questions. How many of you have used Git? Okay. So I'll keep it a little bit more on the high end and not so much of the basic stuff, but it's always good to go back to the basics. So first off, if you run man, git, it is git, the stupid content tracker. Uh, that's actually in the man page. It's kind of funny. Uh, but what is it? It's a, it's a version control system. So there's the technical definition off Wikipedia, or kernel.org, I guess. Um, so git, everybody, this is, I, I always put this slide first, because this is like one of the like main misconceptions. I tell somebody about git, or oh yeah, we use git, and they're just like, oh, I've heard of that GitHub. Well. They're similar, but they're definitely different. Um, Git is a software you run on your computer. GitLab or GitHub is a web service for online collaboration. So it allows things like issues, uh, which is kind of like bug tracking. Uh, you can comment on different things. Everybody can view in a nice web interface. Uh, whereas Git is generally more just software you run on your computer. Has not, it, it's, you use it with GitLab and GitHub, but they are different. So who should use Git? So now we know what it is. Who should use it? So anyone working with source code, I remember before we used to use, uh, at work, we would, if we were making a change, we would just copy a folder, put a date on it, and then just like edit in that folder. But then it's like, so what if two people are editing that and two people edit the same file? It was a nightmare. So anyone working with source code, highly recommend this. Uh, so anyone who wants to track edits to text files, like plain text documents, you got something you want to track edits to, awesome. Uh, if you want to track different versions of the same file, or anybody needing to share with collaborators. If you have some kind of plain text format and you want to share that with multiple people and see which people change what, when, this is the, be this is the thing for you. So here's how you install Git. Uh, Debian, obviously, it's like app get install Git. Red Hat, you got Yum. Uh, Mac and Windows, you just you go to Ubuntu.com slash download. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, they do have uh, official versions on the, on the Git website. It used to be, like for, for Windows, there was an unofficial installer for how you got on there, but now everything's all just on git-scm.com. So it's on every platform. Uh, it's also on BSD. I didn't include that here because not a lot of people use BSD. But you can also get Git on BSD. Although I think the BSD repos are in, still on SVN. Not positive. Uh, things Git can do. So you can review your history, uh, view difference between different versions. So I'll get into what a branch is later. But you can have two versions of the exact same project and like compare one directly with other. And only you only have one file. You don't actually have to keep track of which files are where. You just have two different versions. Uh, you can retrieve old versions. So let's say you're like, oh man, I did this thing, but then I deleted it because I wanted to scrap it and do something else, but you can go back and find it. That's pretty awesome. I'll show you guys how to do that. That does save my butt more than once. Uh, you can work on multiple versions of the same project. Yet again, I talked about branches. Uh, they can, uh, branches that are merged to create a final project. Okay, so that kind of doesn't make sense. But so essentially, if you have two branches, so let's say you have like the stable branch, that is your website. You're going to make a branch, work on whatever feature, feature cool feature two, and then you can merge that back into master, and then you just have one code again. Uh, keep track of who made which edits. This is very important. So you can go back and tell your coworkers they suck, or if your boss is like, you're fired, you did this, you'd be like, I didn't do that. And then you can show somebody else did it, and then they're fired. And then you get a promotion. Awesome. So that's why you should use Git. If you use Git, you get promotions. <laughs> Common users for Git, anything on the web. So I just have like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP because I'm a PHP developer, but anything. Cold Fusion, um, Node.js, any kind of web language, definitely they all use it. Anything that on the web, I definitely highly recommend it for. Excuse me. Uh, the next thing I have is compiled languages. So C, C++, C Sharp, Objective-C, and Java. Those are compiled languages. Um, you don't track the compile. Well, like after the compile, you don't track the binaries, you just track the source code. That's kind of a very important distinction. Um, some companies do track binaries, uh, and that's used for like deploying and stuff, but there's other ways around that. That's a little bit more on an advanced topic, I won't really go over that. Or just plain text. Configuration files, uh, things on a server, those are all plain text. You can track all that. <laughs> These are things Git does not play well with. Binary files. So images, movies, fonts, things like that. Git will tell you that they changed, but it can't go like a line by line change. This line of code was changed, this line of code was changed. Obviously in a binary, binary format, it's just one long line, so you can't really tell what changed. So you can say like, oh yeah, this image changed here and here, but you can't tell, like you can't go back in and look, oh, they replaced a picture of a dog with a picture of a cat. The world's a better place now. So 
Uh, also, interpreted formats. So these are things that you can view as text, but some people don't know they are actually binary formats. If you want to get technical, the docx version is um, XML, but technically they're not. If you change one letter in one word, it could also change the layout of the XML, so these are not very well uh, tracked. So you have, like obviously, Microsoft Documents, spreadsheets, PDFs, and Photoshop files. Uh, yet again, you can track these things. You can say it changed here and here, but you just can't go back and look at like exactly what was changed. So as far as the Git configuration goes, so we've talked about like how you use it, and you can use it to like different people can uh, you can tell who edited which project when. Um, so you have configurations at different levels. You have configurations at the system level, the user level, and the project level. So I could say on my system, so example for my uh, my system at work, I have my work email in there, so that if anybody needs to contact me, they can. Just go see which git commit well, it was, get my email address and email me. Um, my user level is also the same, or sorry, not my system level. System level I never set, but the user level is set to my work email. Uh, but on the per project basis, I have it set to, well, it depends on if I'm working on an open source project or if I'm working on one for work. Uh, if it's not something officially sanctioned by work, I use my personal email. That way if somebody needs to get a hold of me outside of work hours, they can, or if I ever leave the company for whatever reason, they can still get a hold of me. So for my projects that I'm working on I'll, that are open source, I will use the, my personal email, but then I can use my work email for projects at work. So it's a very granular uh, level of control over what your configuration is, or even what your name is. <coughs> uh, almost all aspects, the, the next slide, this is another important thing, almost all aspects are configurable. So you're going to use external programs to, to obviously edit your code and do things like git commit. Um, so you can use any command line editor or not command line editor you want. You can set that up all in the preferences. Uh, the color prompts, aliases, if you want to set up. So, so I know some people that go crazy with alias, where they just have like GC as git commit, and it's just like so they can just like GC and just like it fires off. Where instead of typing like git space commit. <clears throat> so one important distinction, and this I think is a slide that has yeah three tree tree. <laughs> so this is one of the slides that has the messed up stuff on it. Um, one of the important distinctions is between git and uh, older things like SVN or uh, I think uh, CVS is the other one is the two tree architecture versus the three tree architecture. So with the two tree architecture, you have uh, use a repository in a working area. And I'll get over kind of what those are. You'll understand a little bit more after we get into the demos and stuff. Uh, you save file in the working area and then commit all of your changes directly to the repository. With a three tree architecture, you have an extra area. So you have a repository, the staging area, and then the working area. So the staging area is very important because let's say I work on a ton of changes and I just want to commit like one or two things and then commit the next one or two things because they're like two separate pieces but my boss walked over and I had to work on it right away. So the, I can put stuff in the staging area and then re, uh, commit that to the repository and then put the other stuff in the staging area and then commit that separate. Uh, you, so obviously the next line just kind of explains that. Advantages. I kind of already went over these. You can work on multiple files and put them in separate, in separate commits. Uh, you can double check your work before putting it in. I cannot tell you the amount of times I found debug code that I left in while I was staging it and then just looking over like exactly what I was going to commit. And I'm just like, oh, well, if that would have made it to production, like nobody would have been able to save their w settings or whatever. So it's definitely, definitely a huge advantage. Uh, you can also manipulate a group of files outside of the index or outside of your working, in your working directory. I have working index there, but working directory, same thing. <clears throat> so you can look at the files that you have staged. Yet again, you can view them, do different changes to it, all in, all in a separate one. This is kind of a visual representation of that. So if you're working directory, if you run git add, it will add it to the staging area. If you do git commit, it will commit it to the repository. So branches. You guys have heard me talk about this a couple times. I love branches. So git does them very well, and git does them very fast. This is different. When git first came out, uh, SVN didn't do branches very well, and that was kind of like the big player. Uh, and so when Git did this and it's like, oh, somebody can create a branch and then just go and merge it back in, people were just like, pfft, mind blown. Also, it's decentralized. I didn't really talk a ton about that, but Git is decentralized, so you don't have to have a centralized server, only one person can work on one file at a time. I can download the entire project and edit whatever file I want. <clears throat> so, but branches are convenient. You can add new features. Um, you can take an existing feature in a new direction if you just want to try something out, start a new branch. Just Test it. If it doesn't work, just delete the branch. Go back to your old code. Now to the good stuff for the demo. <laughs> okay. So we talked about this uh, the git config thing. So uh, 
I'm just going to start off with a little bit of my environment. So I'm using Z shell. So the green arrow just means the previous command was worked. If it was a red arrow, that means the previous command didn't work. Uh, the blue is the folder I'm in. And after that will be in parentheses the branch that I'm on. You can see right now there is nothing in parentheses. I'm not on a branch. There is no actual, if I do git status, fatal error, not a git repository. So I'm not in a git repository right now. But this is a website I want to edit. So how do I start tracking it? Well, first thing you need to make sure you have all your settings set up right. So I'm going to do git config dash list. First you see my name, then you see my email. I have my editor set to vim and my push set to simple. So let's say these are all global, or sorry, these are user level um, configurations. If I did git config user dot email, Oh, that's right, it's not a Git repository. So I need to show you how to init it before we can actually set up settings for, on the project scope. To init a Git repository, that's all you gotta do. So if I do that, initializing Git repository, and then you can see right here in red, I'm not sure how readable that is, but it says master. So we're on the master branch in our Git repository. The yellow X means that I have uncommitted changes. I'll get to that in a second. Um, let me just double check here. Okay, so I was going over git config. Actually, I can just go up. Did you? So I just set my git config user email. I'm in a project folder, so I believe now you see I have two user.emails. It reads from top to bottom, kind of like in any file. The settings will overwrite. So up here, you see I have email as amayor5125. Down here, I have just amayor. So I can have project-specific settings, but it keeps track of all of my settings. That way, if I would delete that out of the config file, it would just go back to whatever it was before. So whatever I have set at the, the user level. <laughs> okay. So if, I, if, I, if you look here, you'll see that I have a PSDs folder. I should probably look at this screen. It's really hard to do that up there. <laughs> you'll see that I have a PSD folder. We talked about before uh, tracking PSDs, which are Photoshop files aren't very good, I don't work on them. If this was on some kind of like network drive or something, I was just copying all the files over. I don't want to accidentally add these. So I'd like to ignore those. Git also does that. So all right, let me show you something before we actually ignore that. So if I do git status, this is going to show me, oh, this is horrible. Bear with me for one second. <laughs> Boom. Is that better? Yeah. OK, awesome. No, I was trying to get it to be white instead of black. We'll make it a little better, or a little bigger, just for so you guys can see. Holy smokes, that is huge on my screen. <laughs> and it's really hard to see these yellow. Ah, you guys can see it better than mine. OK. So these are all the files that we haven't tracked yet. You'll see that I have a git ignore file. I have a readme, some CSS. I already have the git in it. I'm sorry, like I said, I, I, this, I gave this talk uh, two months ago and forgot to reset it up. So let's just, so I'm just going to remove that file and run git status again. Okay. So now you see I have a hyphen PSDs file at the top, or folder at the top. That, I don't want to track that. Uh, and as I gave away from um, accidentally showing you guys that, but you can do like vim.git ignore. And so we want to ignore all the PSDs. So I have just startup PSDs in my notes. So, so you'll notice I'm not actually, or is it just PSD? I believe it's just PSD. It is. If I run get status again, the PSDs file folder goes away. So I didn't ignore the folder. I ignored the, the files that are PSD. So since there's nothing inside of that folder, I don't want you guys to, to get the misconception. Git does not track file hierarchies. It just tracks files. If I move a file, it will know that I moved it because it doesn't track the contents of this file here. It tracks the contents of, this, of a file. And they all each has unique hash. 
things like that. So that's how Git tracks it. But since I ignored every file inside of this folder, Git won't track any of that. It doesn't care about the folder. It just cares about the files. And if you excuse me for one second, I've got to grab this power cord. All right, we're good. Um, does anybody have questions about initializing a Git repository? All right, like I said, I don't want to keep it, I don't want to go so simple, but I don't want to go straight to the hard stuff. <clears throat> okay, so I have some mock-up emails sent from a client somewhere. Is that really hard to read? All right, so I'm just going to, I kind of want to do like a real world scenario where you get emails from a client or your boss or whatever and they're just like, they're giving you directions. So this one is, Alex, here's a list of things we need on our website. You can have this done by the end of the day, which is a totally reasonable time frame. Create an about page <laughs> with this copy. Uh, we'd also like the contact us page to have a pretty form with a name, email, and comment. Send it to me at companyname.com. Sincerely, the client. So. I have this one already initialized. So we've done git status so far, which shows you the status. I am on origin master has diverged. Ignore that. In the last one, I was showing how to push to a remote repository. I don't know if I get time to cover that this time. Um, but if I do git status, you'll see that the last line there before the prompt again is nothing to commit. Working directory is clean. I can do git log, which is another important thing, where you can view the history. So you see here I did uh, update homepage copy, here Nate added a header, here I updated a web page title, and there was my initial commit from the last repository. You notice that each of these have hashes. This is a very, very important part. So one thing that I didn't mention is git has built-in security. You can't just like slip a commit right in the middle of there because the hash from the one before, so the parent commit, that hash is hashed in the next hash. So you, ha you know you have a known good chain of history. It does use SHA-1. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard recently the SHA-1 has, uh, what's it called? Deprecated. Not deprecated, it's been deprecated for a while. Uh, collisions. So SHA-1 collision has been released where you can like make any file look like any other file. Uh, the guy that invented this, Linus Torvalds, not sure you guys might have heard of him, he's kind of famous. Uh, but Linus Torvalds uh, made Git, he said that it's not something to worry about. Uh, this is, it, those hashes aren't necessarily there for security, they, but they, they are pretty reliable. So I don't know, eventually we might use, move to SHA-256 or something, but I haven't heard anything else since the Google release of the collision attack. But that's what the history looks like. You can do other stuff uh, to, so if you do things like stat, it'll show you like how many files were changed, which files were changed, things like that. So the log, viewing the log will tell you if you ever like, oh, when's the last time we edited this file or who edited that file? You can go back and look at that. So, Client sent this. Did I close that preview? Okay, so client said that we're gonna so we're gonna create an about page. We're gonna add the copy, commit the about page. Let's do all that. So in order to create the about page, let's just like cp index. Oops, gotta give it. Uh. All right, so I just copied the about page. Let's open that. Say what? Did I do that wrong? Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, so you notice our title here at the top's wrong. That's buy stuff. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with PHP. I work a lot in PHP, so some of the stuff you'll see here is PHP, like include this top scripts and include this uh, bottom scripts. That just gets these other files, which just do stuff. Uh, like this one includes bootstrap and some custom CSS, and the top scripts, or the bottom scripts gets jQuery and bootstrap. Not sure, do you, have you guys worked with that, bootstrap? You guys do, don't do any web development? Okay. Well, essentially it makes stuff look pretty, which let's show you. <laughs> Makes stuff look pretty for developers like me that don't actually know a lot of uh, like front-end stuff. I 
these lights get very bright when you have a white screen open. So that's what the home page looks like. And this thing up here that's black, I don't have a lot of CSS written, that thing and like the stuff in the middle and the sizes and the spacing, Bootstrap kind of does all that for you, which is awesome because I'm not a front-end developer, I know how to do front-end stuff, but Bootstrap just saves us all that time. So, the client said they want this copy. We're just gonna copy and paste that. And we can go to slash about PHP. Uh, that doesn't look very good. Let's put a break in the middle after the first uh, first sentence here. And let's just put that in the line. All right, that looks a lot better. Uh, we kind of need a title or whatever for the center of the page. That looks good, right? Oh, yeah. This company's going to be so pleased. Uh, the other thing they wanted is they wanted a contact form. So I already have made that because that would take a lot longer to make. Oh, my God, so many folders. So I just dropped in, contact us. I don't know if you guys know about web. Here's, like, the form. First name, last name, email address, comment. So that cover everything the client wanted? Name, email, comment. Awesome. Send to me at email.com. Kind of irrelevant, but I think... Oh, I didn't actually make it do that. We'll just pretend it goes there. So if you want to see what that looks like. Wow, that does look way better on your guys' screen. I guess it's just the angle. Okay, so that's our contact page. All the pages look similar. Yet again, that's kind of like a bootstrappy thing. Do, do, do. So let's do git status, see what all has changed. So we made about uh, about.php and contact us. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything from the notes. Oh, I was supposed to talk about branches. So right now we're on the master branch. Um, the master branch is kind of the default that Git gives you. Uh, that's whatever your main branch is. Some companies use that as the main branch. Some companies uh, actually make branches for different features of their software. For websites, you really generally only have one main branch because you have like the website that's live. So we use master branch as what is in production. But if you want to make a branch, you can do git branch, bra, branch. And then you give it a branch name, test. And then if I do get, just git branch without a actual name there, you can see, so the green one with the star is the one I'm on, test is the one we just made. Uh, so then you would have to check out the branch. So you do, I can type, I swear. Okay. Git check out test. So now we're on the test branch. If you want to get branch again, you can see it's changed to, to being on the stars on the test branch. So that's how fast it, you can change back and forth the branches, if you type faster than me. <laughs> um, but Let's go back to master, and then let's go, there's a shortcut. So you notice that I did two commands there. I did git branch, and then git checkout test. You can do both of them with just the git, or the checkout command. So I want to check out a, a new branch. So the dash b specifies a new branch. And let's call it about page, or let's just do about. So you'll see it switches to the new branch called about, and if you do git branch, we are now in the about branch. If I do git log, the entire history is the same. So when you create a new branch, it copies the history of whatever branch you're currently on. So we were on master, so it copied everything that was on master. The next important thing is, so now we have these two files that are changed, but they're not really the same. They came from the same email, but they're not really the same idea. So we made an about page and we made a contact page. So we want to do that in two separate commits. And I believe that's in my notes. Maybe not. Um, but so I'm going to do these in two separate commits and I'm going to show you how to do that. So you notice that these are red. If I do git add, that will add something to the staging area. So I talked about the working directory, the staging area, then the repository. Everything in the log is in the repository. Everything that's red is in the working directory. And then when I do git add about.php, 
and do get status again. You notice that about is a new file, change to green, and the contact us is still red. So the about page is in, a, in, the, in the staging area, totally separate from the other one. So if I did a commit right now, it would just take what's in the staging area and put that into the commit. So let's do git diff staged. So if I do git diff staged, that shows me everything, and you'll notice that the, that's only the one page. That's only the about page, and everything's green because we just added it. But that's only one page. That's not the other one. So we can, yet again, this is what I was talking about when you do, um, when I'm looking through right before I make a commit, and you go in here and you're just like, oh, this one line of code is not supposed to be there. So then you can just, you can un undo that and then re restage all your stuff. But we are just going to commit that. So you just, so as you see, all the stuff here, you make sure that you want to do that, double check it, then do git commit. Commit messages. So this is a big thing. Uh, the commit messages follow the format of title, blank line, then comment. The blank line is optional as long as you don't have a comment, but if you have a comment, you have to have a blank line there. Um, different projects have different formats for how you do this. Uh, your title, title might have to have like a, a reference number in it or like an issue number in it. Sometimes the comment has to have a reference number in it. That kind of depends on what uh, company you use for or, or what company you work for or what project you're working on. Generally just look at how previous commits have been done if you're working on an open source project and kind of follow that format. So, but commit messages always need to be, I don't know a good word for this, like present tense. Like they shouldn't be, I did this. They shouldn't be, this does this. This should be, or I guess it should be, this does this kind of, that tense. So, like add about page. So it doesn't say added about page. We didn't do this. So the, the reason you do this is the, if somebody is reading these commits, they can see what this commit will do. They don't see what this commit did because maybe they don't have that commit on their branch. So add copy from client. And there's all these things down here. Obviously the comment says like anything with a hash sign at the beginning of it or a pound sign will, is a comment, won't be included in the message. Uh, I'm using Vim, so I'm gonna write and quit. And then if we do get status, you'll notice that the about page is no longer listed there because it's in the repository. There's nothing to track about it, nothing changed. So let's check it out and get log. So if we do get log, you see the one at the top. That's my commit. I just made that. So let's do the git log of the master branch. So right now we're on the about branch, as you can see, is the about in the parentheses there. So if we do the git log of the master branch, you'll see that that commit is not there. If we switch back to the master branch, we can go right back to production. If something comes in right now and they're just like, this has to be fixed, I can go back to master, make another branch, fix it, and put that back on master. So you're never stuck with the changes you're currently making. If I, if I was, you know, let's say I was on a, this is gonna take me three days to make this form work. It's, you can make a separate branch, work on that for three days. If something has to be merged in right now, you can always go back to master by just doing like git checkout master. And if you did that and get log, we're back on master. The other change isn't there. I swear I can type. This keyboard's weird. <laughs> uh, so you can see, but our, our about branch is still there. We can still switch back. And if we do a git log, yay, our thing's still there. And it switches back that fast. It's, you know, even if this project had hundreds and hundreds of commits, it would still switch pretty fast. I've never seen anything take like longer than like a tenth of a second. I've never had to sit and wait for it to switch a branch, which is awesome. Uh, merging, I've had to take uh, maybe a quarter of a second to merge something, but or to merge a ton of commits, but very, very fast. Compared to SVN, where we, we had, they had, there were companies I've heard of before where it's like when they were using SVN, it's like they were just like Fridays or Thursdays were like dedicated to just merging. It's like everybody just didn't do anything else except for just merge all day. So Git is way more productive. So if you don't want to be productive, work for a company that still uses SVN. If you want to be cool, he's Git. <laughs> yes? What does what Git do when you, actually, when you have conflicting commits? Conflicting changes with two developers and something. Yes. Um, are you asking this because you've used Git before? Excuse me? Are you asking this because you've used Git before or because you are just generally curious? Uh, I manage TFS. Oh, okay. And I've used Git, so a little bit. Okay, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if you were just being educational. By the way, he did great. If you guys have any questions, stop me. I tend to talk fast and just like go. 
So definitely stop me if you have questions. If I've lost anybody, let me know. Um, but what does it do if, uh, so like I said, this is decentralized, so you download the code and work on your computer. What if somebody tries to upload a commit to a central repository or something that you, that they're conflicting commits? Um, there's two things. Git will try to um, figure it out, but if it can't figure it out, when you do a merge, it will tell you these two are conflicting and then it'll have output. So it'll have one error going this way and one error going that way and be like, this was in this commit, this was in that commit, and it requires manual intervention where you have to go back in and delete out one of one of the two or merge them however they need to be merged. And then you, you add it to the repository and just continue with the merge. So you're, you're merging your changes into your code manually? If they're, if they're conflicting. conflicting, yes. Yeah. Uh, if they're not, like, so let's say I edit line 12 of a file and somebody else edits line 13, they shouldn't be conflicting. They should be fine. Uh, so they, if you do a git merge with that, it'll just merge right up, be all sweet and dandy. Uh, but if both people edit, say, like line 12, like I edit, like the entire line 12 and somebody else edits the entire line 12, the, the conflicting message would be like, you know, it, or when you looked at the file, it would show you the two, that line and then show you the two versions of that line. And you need to figure out either which one you want or which pieces of which one you want, and you have to manually put it together. So it, it does the best it can, but obviously with people working on stuff all the time, if, you know, if, if my boss sends me, hey, make this copy change, and you, the supervisor sends somebody else, hey, make this copy change, it, it can happen. And then you got to either pick one. Obviously, the boss takes Trump, but it's like if the supervisor is the account executive or whatever, it's like, yeah, you just kind of figure it out. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. All right. So you've used Git. Have you had com commit? Uh, no, I'm running a team across eight different sites, four states. OK. And even T in TFS, so you can get some interesting merges here. Mm -hmm. I've never worked with uh, TFS. But were there any other questions before I keep going? All right, did I lose anybody? I see some blank faces, OK. <laughs> so we made the one commit. I switched branches back and forth a couple times just to confuse you guys, not leave a trail. But uh, so we still have this contact us page that we want to commit. Yet again, question. what's what up? You, what did you do to get your branch to show on the commit line? That's part of the problem. So it depends on which uh, terminal I'm, or which shell you're using. If you're using bash, git comes with something. It's called like underscore git underscore branch, maybe. Uh, but I am using Z, Z, S, H with O, my, Z, S, H. And this is just a theme for it. So uh, O, my, Z, S, H is what, I, what, it, what it is. And it's just, actually, it's the default theme. I really like it. I've tried a couple other themes. They look cool. But the default is just like, I like it the best because it's very simple and straight to the point. Um, but Bash does when you when you install Git, I think it comes with a a, a script that you can add to your uh, Bash RC file that does it. That's what I was looking for. What did you have in your Bash RC file? So we're gonna uh, like I said before, we're gonna add that if we do a Git status again. You see that now it's green because that means it's in the staging area. Git commit. Oh, another thing. So you notice the, the, the title is always title case. Uh, below that, it kind of is freeform. The comments are probably where the most controversy, or not just controversy, like the most differences are when you get to different projects. Generally, the titles are all title case. I've seen very few projects where they aren't. Some projects where it's just like, you know, somebody's just learning Git or just wants to get something on GitHub. Yeah, it's not the greatest. But uh, generally, the titles are title case. The comments are sentence case, I guess, the first letter. And they can be sentences. They don't have to have periods. It doesn't really follow any kind of, there's no actual rules for what they have to be formatted like. To be clear, if someone else goes in and looks at this commit, they won't see anything that's preceded by the hash? Yes. OK. So I mean, I could put stuff like up here with a hash. I've never tried this, but it'll make a liar out of me, like test. And let's do uh, forum. Oh. So let's write that and see what it does. There you go. Yeah, anything with a hash before it won't be show, won't show up. Now you see I do git status if I do it right. I'm on branch about nothing to commit. Working directory is clean. So working directory clean, good sign. That means everything's in your repository. If you do a git log, everything's there. All right, nextly. Okay, so actually, now that we've committed some stuff, let's just do 
I'm going to show you some cool features of Kit. So let's say I'm working on this file and I accidentally just like delete this. And then I save it and then I close it. And I don't save that. I don't know what I forget what change I made there, but oh well. So I close that file. If I open this contact us file, it's like, oh my goodness, all this stuff is gone. Where did it go? I just have like a random open tag here. This thing's totally broke. If I do get status, it shows us that the file was modified. If I don't want that change, I just want to go back, like panic, oh my goodness, I just want to go back. I can just check out the file from the repository. I think I noticed in the background, it flicked right back to where it was. Okay, cool. So I can, I can check out files from the repository, but what if I accidentally like delete contact us? Like it's not even there. As I noticed from this tree over here, definitely not there. We see the yellow, the yellow X, that means I have changes, so get status, what happened? Oh, it was deleted. Okay, well, if I want it back, same thing. Get, check out. And you'll notice it's back here. Yay. So that's cool. So I gave you simple examples. Let's say you deleted something, committed a bunch of stuff, you accidentally added it to a commit. You can go back, you can go back through your log and get stuff out of there too. Uh, a little bit more advanced. Um, there's a thing called working directories where you can check out like a version of your repository in a subfolder. I've never done that, but if you had to recover a file, I'm guessing that's like a great way to do it. Uh, generally, I just check out the, so you can, let's get status. <coughs> or sorry, get log. So these hashes are very important. So let's say I want to go back to like update homepage copy. I can check out that hash. And now I'm like way back there. You'll see like my, over in the working tree, there's like no files there. Uh, contact us obviously is not there. But, so that's just some basic stuff. But you'll notice I get this error, kind of error-ish message. Uh, you're in a detached head, so I'm not on a branch anymore. And that's why the branch in the parentheses shows that part of the hash. I'm, I, I, am, I am back to where I was before, or where, where I was at that time of that commit. So then I can copy stuff out of a file, recheck out about, paste stuff back into a file. I could move files somewhere else if I wanted to, or I can make a branch from here. I can actually, uh, it tells you right there, if you get checkout dash B in a branch name, I will have a branch on that commit, which is awesome. But we just want to go back to about. And get log. Yeah, we didn't lose anything. Everything's still there. Gets nice like that. On to email two. Alex, there was a typo on the about page. Cell should be cell and definitely should be definitely. Of course, the client would send copy with errors in it. Also, they're sponsoring cats for the month. That's awesome. Can you add this image to the, to the header of our website? And then they have an attached image, the client. So I don't know how many of you have clients. They are always sending stuff with errors in the copy. That's why we have a full-time proofreader at the company I work for. <laughs> So I think I, have a, I think I have a separate about page. What is that? Is it some of my mis developers make mistakes? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I only ever copy and paste stuff. I never type copy. If they tell me to type copy, we have dedicated copywriters. So it's like either somebody's writing the copy or somebody's proofing the copy that came from the client. I do not, I'm not about that life. So if I go up here, oh, I don't have the about page. Oh well. We'll manually make the changes. So you notice here, oh, let's show you, actually show you on the website. So here it says like cell instead of cell with two L's. And definitely I need to copy and paste because I can't spell either. All right, so I didn't go over my setup very well. I'm using Atom as a text editor. Uh, it's similar to Sublime. I'm not sure if Sublime has stuff like this built in, but this is made by the people, that, the same people that make GitHub. And you'll notice these two yellow things over here. That means that these two lines were edited. Th that is great when you're just like looking through files or you have like 10 files open and you're just like, oh, which lines in this file did I edit? If you don't want to do a git diff, you can just scroll down each page or find the, the ones that are, uh, sorry, also over here, this shows you which ones are yellow. I'm not sure if that shows up very well over there, but this is yellow. So I can see that this file was edited and these two lines were edited inside that file. It's the same as if I do a git diff, all caps, I need to yell that. So if I do a git diff and make that full screen, <laughs> to make it look prettier. So you'll see, I have those two red lines, they were removed, two green lines, those were added. Typical diff file. Um, 
So I can see exactly what here, what changes there are. I sh I've showed you how to do that in the staging area. So, uh, so if I do like git diff staged, that's how you view things, the difference in a staging file. If you just want to view the working directory, you just do git diff. Look up status. There's that. Uh, yet again, so they asked us for two changes. They asked us to make copy changes to the about page and they asked us to make, uh, to add a kitten. Git add about. So we're just going to add the about git commit. So those were two separate requests. Shouldn't they be two separate commits? They are. I didn't make the change for the kitten yet. No, the two spelling errors. Uh, the two spelling errors are, okay, I like what you're doing there. So, <laughs> so I clarified that, so we made a contact page and about us page. Um, those were two uh, separate spelling errors, but they both have the same idea. I guess I, I didn't really cover that. So a commit should encompass one idea. If you can say like this is an idea, put it in the same commit. So if you're like mucking with the navigation, but you also like added a header, those are different. They could be in the same area of the website, but definitely different. The header is a separate thing than the, the navigation. So there were, there were two separate misspelled words, but the, the idea, I guess you could say, is like proofing changes. You can't put a header in proofing changes. Um, <laughs> so the other one was they wanted to add a cat image, which I conveniently have nowhere to be found. Let's see if it's in here. Okay, so I don't even have an images folder, so let's make one. Images. Paste that in there. Yay. All right, so we want to add the cat image probably to the header of the website. That's where they asked to add it. It's up here somewhere. So let's open up that header. And oh my goodness, somebody doesn't know how to code. Does anybody, do you guys know HTML? Do you know that looks like horrible HTML? No indentation. That's crazy. So let's see who did that. So there's two ways you can do this. <laughs> you can do git log dash dash stat. And then you can scroll down until you see who was the last person to edit the header page. And there it is, right here. Header was edited by Nate Moss. You gotta forgive him though. He's a system engineer, he is not a developer. It's all good. I totally forgive you, Nate. It's it's fine, we'll fix it. So you didn't change anything else for the presentation. <laughs> except for that. <laughs> so. Ooh, don't do that. Okay. So that looks like some better HTML. That is definitely more readable. Uh, so since we're changing that, since that's a uh, like a uh, refactoring, that's what the word I was looking for. So we refactored that code. That doesn't. So we can add the header image in there right away. But refactoring the code should really, yet again, be its own commit. It's its own idea. Git add. All right, so then when I go back there, you see all these yellow lines uh, disappear. And I'm not actually sure where we would add an image. Let's see. So here's a button. Let's add it right underneath. Let's see what it looks like. Actually, let's just copy it from a previous website. So this is another cool feature. So you see I'm just like copying and pasting code from like elsewhere. I can paste this file here. I have no idea what the changes are. Just replace it and see exactly what it changed. Apparently not the header we wanted. So that adds stuff to navigation. So maybe I add it on the index page. Okay, so the change on the index page you can see there has uh, the red, silver, Turkish, whatever cat.
we go to our website. Hmm. Now you just committed the right, you committed the navigation change, but you gave it the wrong. Did I? Wrong commit message. Oh, I didn't. Oh, no, I didn't. I forgot to add the image. Because, see, the, the, the header's still, still there. Header's still modified, yes. Uh, but the image, I, so I didn't add the image. Okay, so Firefox hides images that are missing. If I refresh this, it should give me like a 404. Okay, so, oh, company logo's missing. What the heck? You're not on the homepage. I am not on the homepage, you are correct. Okay, so 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 that worked. The, the image shows where, exactly where it should be, but the, you'll notice that I didn't add the image to so images folder, there's a file inside of that that is actually the one we want. So, And you don't have to type out the whole path. You just have to be unique enough to add the things you want. So I know everything in the images folder I want. So I'm going to add that. Do a get status just to double check. Actually do a get status so to double check. Um, and you'll see the green thing, the, the cats we added. Or cats were added. So I have a commit. I said that I added add cat image to home page, but that's not in the same commit. The cool thing with git is I can amend the top commit. So I said that each commit uh, consecutively has the parent commit's hash inside of it, but the one on top doesn't really matter. The hash for that, kind of relevant. If you push it, you probably shouldn't edit it, but I can amend that because I haven't pushed that to the central repository yet. So I can add, or I already added images. I can do commit dash dash amend. And you notice that it preloaded that actual commit that I had before. So then if I write that, The, the images uh, thing was done, and if I do git log, there is only one change. And I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but the hash changed. So when I updated it, the time was probably incorporated that. Obviously, the file was incorporated in that, so the hash changed. So the hash is different. You cannot, like, I cannot edit the, the second commit here in Nate's crappy code, but I can, add it, I can edit the, the add cat image commit because it is the top of the current branch that I'm on. Um, since the piece is here, I guess we'll cut this maybe a little bit short. Let me see what else I got. I had a third email. I forget what it, what it was, but... Uh, the third one is just more create branch, do logo. Let me show you a merge real quick right before we get to that. But okay, so I've been working on this about branch. If you look at the log, obviously we have a couple things there. If we check out master, <clears throat> we don't have any of those changes we made. If we or we made, if we want to change, if we want to merge those change changes into master, if I actually check out master, please commit your changes. Oh, because I have a header. <laughs> Okay, so you notice I don't have any of those changes we just made. And then if I do git uh, merge, I can merge the about branch, and just like that, boom, everything's done. So if I do git log now, all the stuff is there. All the, all the changes that we had on our about branch, both branches are now identical. Are there any questions? Does anybody have any examples they wanted me to go over quick? So if you have more than two branches, okay. and when you check out <coughs> from which branch it will be checked out? Uh, the branch you're currently on. So right now I'm on the master branch. If I checked out, it would, it would copy the pointer from the master branch. Uh, but I have a test branch that, that's, uh, like I have a test branch that's probably a couple of commits behind. Uh, if I would check out this branch, the, the history would look identical. So, so branches, the, the cool thing is branches are just pointers to specific commits. They're not actually total copies. So if I had 50 branches, I wouldn't have 50 times the files. I just have a pointer to like a state in a file versus having like 50 copies. Git doesn't just make a bunch of copies. What's up? Uh, public service, uh, I found it really useful to use git checkout, I believe it's colon and then a file name. Okay. This will pull the current state of that file from the other branch into your current branch. This is really useful when you want to merge, well, not properly merge, but just bring all of the latest version of that file over to the branch you're currently working on. Just that one file. Okay, so, so you do git checkout. Do you do a branch name colon, or how, how does it? How do you know which branch to pull from? Say you're on master, okay. and you have one particular file 
that you've made a bunch of changes to in dev branch. Okay. And so in master, you would do git checkout dev branch index.php. Okay. Colon index.php. And that would pull the state, that one file, and overwrite your master index.php with your dev branch index.php. This has been really useful for me for pulling just that one one particular file with lots of changes in okay. it, up to a master branch. All right, the, the one thing that I do, I haven't done, done anything with that, but we do cherry picking, which is essentially if you have one commit on another branch, it could even be in the middle of the commits, but you just really want that commit to be on your current branch, you can just like cherry pick and take that commit and put it on whatever branch you're on right now. The hash will change because the parent hash is different, but you can take uh, commits off of other branches. I've done stuff like that. Any other questions? All right, break for pizza. Awesome. Thank you.